Oh. I was not expecting, uh, expecting that. Just wanted to come out of this clearing, but uh, that's quite interesting. I think you can see a little bit of it over here as well. Hang on, I'll show you. Don't know how much of it you can see. You can see it's quite overgrown. I might try to uh, investigate. Hang on. Today's investigation takes us to an abandoned industrial complex in Castleford between the River Air and Calder. At first I didn't know much information about the site, only where it was. But after some research and digging through other photographs and also this handy map I finally stumbled upon a name, Hickson and Welch. Sure enough, that led me to videos, news articles, and a history of the chemical works that went on. Here is the Hickson and Welch Abandoned Industrial Complex Investigation. The Hickson and Partners Limited Chemical Works in Castleford were erected in 1915 for the purpose of manufacturing tri-nitro-toluene. The founder of the company, Mr. Ernest Hickson, had previously owned chemical works at Wakefield, but these were not adequate for the output required and a new site was found on the banks of the River Air, just below its junction with the Calder, giving a frontage for keys of some 650 feet and offering facilities for splendid railway sidings direct down to the London and North Eastern Railway from his Castleford station. The founder of the company, Ernest, had been intimately connected with the aniline colour trade since the earliest days, being with the first large makers of aniline dyes in the world since 1877. And the new works were so designed at its inception that it could be eventually converted into a self-contained unit for dyes, and only dependent on other sources for crude basic raw materials such as sulfur and crude benzol. Business went on as usual for a number of years until July 4th, 1930, when a disastrous explosion occurred. According to reports, the explosion occurred in the acid mixing plant and not in the nitration department. This made it all the more difficult to understand what had happened. The accident was preceded by a rush of brown fumes from which there suddenly occurred a large yellow flame similar to an enormous gas flame. 13 lives were lost, 32 people were injured, and great damage caused to property. On July the 29th, only a few weeks after the explosion, Ernest collapsed and died while playing croquet at Bedford on a Tuesday night. Shortly after his death, Hickson and partners went into liquidation. From the site that had been destroyed in 1930, Hickson and Welch Limited was founded with fresh finance in 1931 by Bernard and George Colbeck Welch, and the plant was rebuilt. Mr. Colbeck Welch died in 1943. From 1944, the company made DDT, an insecticide, becoming the UK's largest manufacturer. Hickson & Welch Holdings Limited was incorporated on 28th September 1951. It made dye stuffs, DDT, and timber preservatives. It became a public company on 30th of November 1951. The company became known as Hickson International from 1985. It bought Angus Fine Chemicals for 22.3 million in July 1992. On the 21st of September 1992, an explosion at the factory killed five workers and injured around 200 people. At 1.20, a distillation column space containing residues of nitrotoline ignited. The fireball went through the site's control room and killed two men instantly. The fireball then entered a four-story office block. A woman and two men passed away from their injuries later. The explosion cost 3.5 million pounds. Too hard to uh, get into. This is quite, quite old, but I think it's all part of a public footpath now. Hang on. Wow. I think so.
I feel like, yeah, maybe there is a, maybe this is the footpath. God, there's a footpath that just goes straight through an old industrial complex. How freaking cool is that, man? Yeah, look, look at it, it stretches on for quite well. Oh my God. You know, some people probably take this walk every day to get to like school or work and it's just like nothing to them. It's crazy, man. It is crazy. Right, if it's, uh, if it's a bit of a boring walk, I'll cut out the boring bits. It's just more, look, you can definitely tell there was some kind of a road or something. They were doing something. All kinds of stuff in place. That's some really clean graffiti. You gotta, you gotta respect that actually. That's, that's nice. Some graffiti looks like shit, but that, well, that's, I'd say that's art. Looks like you can climb in there. It's still a bit overgrown, but I'm quite tall, so. You can always check this footage back. If there's anything super interesting to see. Gotcha, yeah, look, even more nice looking graffiti. Man, what is, what is this? What is this? Rebar and stuff in place, man. I mean, they were they were doing something. Obviously, they don't do it anymore. I say youth. I think so. Good job, my friend. Looks very clean. Very nice. Don't know what's going on in there. Hang on. Probably nothing exciting. But I want to get it all anyway, just in case. I think it just kind of links around. Carry on this footpath, see if we can reach the, uh, the railway viaduct. If I want to earn my drink tonight, I think, uh, you know, I've got to get as much cool footage as I can. To be fair, this is a, it's a little bit of a treasure trove. I wouldn't say it's the best. But it's pretty cool. It's pretty fucking cool. And it will become a video. Gross, man. so ominous. In fact, that's just so open. Look at how open and clear this is. It's like I'm walking into a, uh, to a boss arena. It's like you've only got the one way to go. I have got enough battery for my GoPro. First world problems. It's just so open. It's just staggering, isn't it? The fact this is such a big area. I mean, it's just going on and on. Just when you think you found the end of it. Hi, Heart Cass. Hey. Me too, buddy. Me too. Got a lot of good childhood memories for me. It's Cass. That's Castleford for those who are not aware. Gosh, it's just so big. It's just so big. This looks like a regular place for kids to hang out, but uh, that's some clean cut circles, isn't it? Hola, we'll get a slap. Great, man. Very excited for you. Just uh, Do you see? Spider web, yeah. Grossness, totally. Let's try the bigger hole. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh no. <laughs> Stop getting sidetracked. We're trying to find this railway viaduct. I'm sure it's further along. That's what the uh, all my sources say. I mean, they did, they did say there was an industrial complex around here, but 
I, uh, I did not know quite the, the scope of what we would find. Because they had some pictures up. But uh, didn't make it seem very impressive. And yet it is. This looks like it was going to be foundations for like a silo or a bridge or something. God, it just goes on for a while, doesn't it? Some real uh, Marble Hornet Slenderman fucking tower thing there. Wrong color, but you get the you get the hint. I could die here. I really hope not. Just playing around, you know. Just just trying to have a good time. Yeah, thankfully for you guys, I can just uh, fast forward the slow bits. But uh, not in real life. Real life, I gotta walk. Thankfully, I've got some comfortable shoes. Pretty gross. Hang on. Are you? You probably didn't see any of that. It's probably super dark. In which case, I apologize. Looks like it's just got like a flat top on that, so it could have been some kind of a nasty water chamber. It looks like water was going into it, almost like it was part of a uh, part of an irrigation system or something. That'd be my guess. Let's crack on. There's too much to see here, and to be fair, some of it's interesting. Some of it's meh. Some of it's not that interesting. I want to find this railway viaduct. It's getting a little warm now. Opening in that fence, but I think it just takes you back to the uh, the canal anyway. I think so. I think it's just a shortcut to the canal. People, you don't want to walk all that way. It's fair. I get it. God, this is big. So I think at the end of this, there should be a lock. I can cross the lock to reach more public footpath. Hopefully from there I can see the old bridge. The old railway viaduct, they call it. It's, it's a bridge, technically, I think. In August 2000, Hickson International PLC was bought by Arch Chemicals. At the time, Hickson employed over 1,300 people, had assets of 73 million and a revenue of 208 million. It became known as C6 Solutions and closed in July 2005, as demand had clearly dwindled over the years. The gas-fired power station still remains. Over the years it was taken down, parts at a time, with some videos and news articles still available for the public to see. Walking through what remains of the industrial complex was incredible, and really helped give some sense of the scale of the operation and some of the effort that went into. And although not much is left, you can still find some gems of the past. As turns out, not only have I got back to the bridge, as promised, uh, this building here is a substation. I saw a sign on the, uh, the side of it as to whether it's still in use or not. It seems really overgrown, so I, I really doubt it. But clearly they were going to have some electrical infrastructure. They were going to have everything. Anyway, let's check out the uh, spooky, scary bridge. This one looks... Uh, yeah, I definitely like it was going to have industrial vehicles, but... You know, this is a bit spooky. Still out on the river, the river air. Yeah, it's certainly crumbling and in disrepair, but it's still still very sturdy. You can tell it's just been left, just left to rot. 
we don't do anything about it. Looks like uh, the bridge only goes so far, which is to be expected. You can kind of see over it though. Still newer stuff going on. I didn't like that sound. Yeah. How about that? It's been a pretty good little urban exploration day, right? Time to get some lunch. That's it. That's the bridge. Butthole princess.